kind of went outside the box today in bringing in non-industry professionals within our group to talk to you. So the idea is just to use some of this information they gave you, some of these techniques and some of these models, and think about how you can integrate it into your real estate business. Because you may not be selling vodka, you may not be selling burgers, you might not be selling brisket, but you are selling yourself, your brand, your company, and ultimately, you know, that American dream. As, uh, as everybody would uh, suspect, good branding means you've got to be very, very consistent in your message. So it's not over here for my co -pound. So we were trending in the fourth quarter of 2009, uh, downwards in all the categories that our stockholders have keep track of. But when we launched uh, the right 3 right 5 the right 7 lineup, uh, things started to reverse. And uh, we, our, our global brand right now, we are six. We saw a 10% increase in brand value. So branding works, and good branding really works. How did we do it? Um, I'll go to that last bullet. Just say that less could be more. Keep branding simple. Introduce Chris Kretchek with GSDNM. Chris? Purpose based branding. And the big thing about purpose, it, it's really broken down into three simple questions, which is figuring out you know, what it is that you have that people want that your competition can't or won't deliver on. If you figure out the answer to those three questions, you know what your purpose is, and you can deliver on it, and you can basically outperform your competition. So, so the challenge for you guys is staying top of the market. How do you do that? How do you do that in this industry where basically you give people your business card, some of you guys put pictures on, some of you guys you know, have other ways of getting people to remember you, but this is the challenge, to see a name, to see a faces, a sea of entrepreneurs. So what can you do to set yourself apart? That's what we're going to talk about. Well, you can be like Phil Dunphy. Okay? You can get a big old man hat, okay? which is fantastic. But you've got to be careful about the instructions you give to the man hat. Because you might be sabotaging your own family if you're trying to say, oh, man, man. man. You've got to be careful with that. Fantastic episode, by the way. seriousness though, you need to be relevant. That is the biggest thing of all. People have questions out there, people are looking for things, and if you're relevant in their lives, if you answer their questions and you give them what they're looking for, they're going to remember you. Okay? It's called word of mouth marketing. He's got this great quote which I'm going to read to you here. People love to talk. They talk about hair color, cars, computers, sandwiches, TV shows, and floor cleaners. Advertising, he says, is actually the price of being boring. If your customers won't talk about your stuff, you have to pay newspapers and TV shows to do it for you. Word of mouth marketing is about making your stuff and your company worth talking about. And now I'd like to ask Beth to come on here. Beth from Tito's. When you're being yourself, there is no competition. Um, as you can imagine, when a liquor brand is owned by a single person, um, that there's a lot of competition and that he's really beating the odds. You really have to keep your head down and remember who you are and never compare yourself. We also say comparison is the thief of joy and I really, really, really believe that. So we try to stay true to who we are and now it's exciting to be a brand projecting love to even more people because I always say, vodka is the side note to people beating the odds. Some you know, cowboy scientists in Texas who never thought he'd get it into a store, you know, is now this beloved guy. So, anyway. We're going to move on. I'd like to invite Nicole Torres Cook from Schmooze Networking. The whole thing in today is your marketing. And you learn from different panelists what's important in marketing. It's your brand, it's being real, it's not being superficial and fake, and with online now, people can see right through it, just like they said. So, talk to you today about social media and how to manage your social media. First thing you need to do is make sure that you're in compliance on all your social media. You guys have your advertising guidelines per TREC and NAR and ABOR in Wilson County, so make sure that you follow all that 
Because if you don't, you're going to get fined. And they are looking at social media. Be sure you have your one playthrough rule, you know, that your broker information is on there. You lenders need to have your NMLS number on there now. And treat it just like you do your print advertising. And then make sure that when you're doing that, that you're also going back into those individual accounts and engaging. You've got, it's one thing to post all day long, but if you're not having that interaction and that engagement, it's useless. There's no, there's no relationship building. I know Victoria is really huge on relationship marketing. And it's true, you've got to build that, that relationship. And that social media gives you a great venue for maintaining and retaining those clients. Okay. Also, Dry Band from k and Management. They are our Rudy's and Mighty Fine Ladies. <laughs> yeah. It's also about being engaging, right? Being interested. Do you look at the person when you talk to them? Do you make eye contact? Do you smile? Do you act like they're the only person in front of you? Even if you've got 5,000 other things going on around you, do you focus on that one person and engage them? It's also about being authentic, right? Being true to who you are. You don't treat everyone the same because they're all individuals. So it's being authentic. Know who you are, know what you're about, know your product, and know your brand. All right, so what um, Beth had started talking about with Tito's is knowing your story. And so that's why all of those pieces are so important when it comes to branding. We know who we are and we know what it is we're trying to communicate to our guests, both internal and external. So we do that by creating a buzz. Um, this is a quote from Unmarketing. This is a, a tweet that they sent out. It's a great um, blog and Twitter account that has some really great insights into creative ideas for marketing. And it says, awesomeness trumps all, including marketing. Nobody tells stories about their loyalty, but they talk about their experience. So social media is really important. I'm not going to go into all these statistics, but basically by now you know that there are millions and billions of people on social media. That is a whole market that you can tap into. Facebook, if it were a country, country, would be the third largest country, which would make it ahead of the US in size. That is a huge number of people that are there listening and interacting with you, and that's an opportunity for you to get in there and interact and build those relationships back. 50% um, of the world's population is under 30 years old, and 96% of them are on social media. So um, that's a you know that's a great market. That's a great way to tap into. So people that don't necessarily want to pick up the phone or don't. I mean, I can't remember the last time I opened a phone book. So um, Facebook is where people are, and that's a great way to reach them.